Hello, this is Terra Luke. I changed my name because it sounds a fraction less stupid than my previous name idea, Electro Luke. Today I'll try to mod my DSO 150, which I reviewed and showed how to update the firmware on my previous videos. This is truly a fun, useful and inexpensive kit build that I suggest you checking it out. This time I'll attempt to add an internal power supply, consisting of a LiPo battery and common power management modules. Doing this modification my way, you'll get a tiny bit more efficient power supply than what I see on the forum. I'll explain it later. And I wouldn't call this video a step-by-step -step tutorial, more like a vlog how I did it with tips, tweaks and my shitty schematic. I hope this will be thorough enough to be easily understood. Let me start with the necessary parts, and because this mod deals with rechargeable LiPo battery, you'll need a battery charger and some protection circuitry. Module that features these things is based on TP4056 charge AC, capable of delivering one amp to the battery. That's a very common part. Another important part is adjustable DC to DC boost converter. It is based on MT3608 chip, it's almost on every electronics vendor site too. The point of this module is to boost battery's nominal 3.7 volts to voltage required by the DSO, which is around 9 volts. Just ignore the unusual potentiometer. The thing is, I restored this dead module and had to replace the part. I had no other fresh board left in my parts bin, nevertheless it works the same. Then there's micro USB breakout board. It is optional. You can use micro USB socket straight from the charger module. I use this as a power input extension just out of convenience of being able to mount the port freely in the DSO case. Links for parts in the description. LEDs for charger module indication are also optional. There's SMD LEDs already on the board. I use through-hole just for better looks. And of course we need a battery. This is a scrap one out of two cell pack and it should be around 850 milliamp hour capacity. On paper, it should give around three hours runtime, and any other bigger battery that I have just wouldn't fit in the DSO. I covered it in captain tape for safety, because the inside of my case is covered with pretty much pointless uninsulated shielding. Also, you'll need wires, soldering tools, I recommend captain tape, alternatively electric tape and double-sided sticky tape. I wanted to make this mod clear, so I draw on a schematic separated into 7 orange steps. It's not necessary to do them in sequence, they're just only for keeping track. I've measured that this oscilloscope draws around 120 milliamps when active. Well, not milliamp hours, but milliamps, sorry. <laughs> By basic calculation, my battery has around 3 watt hours of energy, and DSO uses around 1 watt. So, in theory, we could get 3 hours of runtime. In reality, it will be less, because boost converter is not 100% efficient. From left to right, we have battery, charger module, boost converter, and DSO board separated with puncture line. First step is to short unmounted R30 pads on digital board. This bypasses the switch SV5. To electrically disconnect the switch from digital board, we have to cut out a trace shown on the second step. I've drawn a fragment of digital board, physically located here. The green colored part needs to be disconnected. You can do this with X-Acto knife by making a millimeter wide parallel cuts and scraping off the middle piece. Make sure you don't do a cut where I marked it orange. Third step is similar, you need to cut out a trace shown on the fragment like this. In the end, first three steps related to switch disconnection have to look somewhat like this. Next, I began connecting the power supply. Attach battery's leads to B plus and B minus accordingly. If you choose to use micro USB breakout board like me, pick a place where you want to mount it. I picked this part because it has a flat surface where it can be easily mounted using double sided sticky tape. Then connect charger's modules out minus to boost converters V in minus. Out plus and converters V in plus has to be joined together also but through a switch we just separated moments ago. I strung these two wires through one of the holes close to rotary encoder for reaching switch pins and soldered like this. Dabbed hot glue to secure it. Because now we've got wires threaded through the hole, we'll need to cut out this plastic pin of the top of the case. Don't worry, it won't affect structural strength. Structural, structural strength, structural, structural strength of the case. While the DSO is disconnected from the boost converter, 
Flick the switch and set up the boost converter's potentiometer so the output voltage is as close to 8.35 volts as possible. After adjustment I suggest dabbing a tiny bit of hot glue or super glue between knob and frame of the part, so you couldn't accidentally change it. Supplying 10 volts can damage the DSO and please just don't test how far it can go until you get black screen or whatever. Free shipping durations from China is not exciting, so pay attention to this step. Now turn off the switch. What's left is to connect converter's output Vout plus to V plus on the digital board and Vout minus to ADGN. I took advantage of the surface mount voltage regulator. It has a closely exposed pins that trace down to V plus, outer right pin and GND middle pin respectively. Connect micro USB VCC pin to in plus pin on the charger and GND pin to in minus pin. And that's it, core modification is done. Flick the switch again and see if it works. If it doesn't turn on on the first time, you might have accidentally triggered protection of the charger module. It happened to me. To reset it, connect USB 5 volts to the charger board for a moment. If this does not work, try troubleshooting by checking voltage on various points. But so far, electronics should be done. For me, this is how everything will fit. There is not a lot of space inside, even my battery will have to sit at an angle. I only glued charger module with double-sided sticky tape, cut out a hole for a micro USB socket, made holes for LEDs and replaced SMD ones with mine. and added some heat shrink tube on the boost converter. Mounted the battery using velcro tape. That's it, I hope it helped ya. There's many ways you can do this modification, but I suggest mine, because you won't waste any power through unnecessary safety diode close to external power supply socket. That's why we had to take away the switch, and that's why we're supplying 8.35 volts, not 9 volts. We're simply subtracting diode's forward voltage. Boost converter already has a diode on the output, so from both sides of the power inputs we have diodes. This lets us connect power not only from the battery, but also supplying 9 volts through barrel jack connector. They shouldn't damage each other, but still, I wouldn't recommend supplying both at the same time. There's even no point doing that. Nevertheless, now I've got it working and I hope you'll try to mod it too. It's cool, it's useful, you learn a bit doing this. You can watch this oscilloscope review and firmware update tutorial by clicking on the screen. Until the next video, bye!